Hi, today I will show you one of my favorite setups for creating applications in Next.js that consume GraphQL APIs. And as a GraphQL client library, we'll be using Oracle. Let's get started. So why Oracle? It's a well-built library and it's a library that creates small bundles. So if we go to the documentation, you can see that it's very small compared to the default choice, the most popular choice, which is Apollo. And there is also Relay. So this one is roughly six kilobytes. So let's see how we can use it with Next.js to consume uh, those GraphQL APIs. And as an example of an API, I will be using a Sailor API. You can access it at this URL and we can start doing our queries. So for example, in this case, I will be fetching a list of products with ID and name. And then I need to also specify how many products I want and default channel like that. And I should get those uh, products. So we will be trying to execute this query from a Next.js application using Oracle as the GraphQL client library. So first of all, let's create our Next.js app. I will be using PNPM and we'll be using TypeScript. So let's call it Oracle Next app and before we go even further let's add oracle as a dependency we can also add graphql tag it will be useful later And let's open the project. So the first thing we need to do is to connect to our endpoint. So let me create a folder. Inside this folder, I will create a GraphQL TypeScript file. And let's import create client from Oracle. And now we can export our client and it requires a URL. And as the URL, we'll be using Versal, Sailor, Cloud, GraphQL, like that. So now we need to provide this client to our React application. So we'll be using a provider, provider, from your QL and it takes a value which is the client and we need to import that like that. So next let's create a folder for storing our GraphQL queries and I call it just GraphQL and inside this folder let's create our first query fetch product list GraphQL. So I prefer to use uh, files with GraphQL extensions because it's easier for the tooling and uh, for the developer experience. And to make it even better, you would need to add a plugin called VS Code plugin called GraphQL. So install GraphQL. So that's the one you need to install. So it provides you some uh, hints of the completion. But in order to make it work, we need to create a configuration file called uh, GraphQL RC YAML. And here we need to provide a schema, which is exactly the same as the one we add here
And now if you start writing your, I think you need to reload the window. So yeah, it will autocomplete. So products, edges, node, ID, as before, name, and maybe let's add thumbnail URL. So it's pretty convenient to use like that. And we'll also name our query. It's important to name queries or caching and uh, just to have it nicely organized. And here as before, I will fetch 12 and the channel would be the default channel. This is something specific to Sailor API. Okay, so we have our query and now we can maybe execute it. So usually, and um, let's remove that. So Oracle provides this um, hook called use query. And here we need to provide the query we want to execute. So you need to have it available as a string and that's not ideal. So I'd like to automate that process. And in order to do that, we will be using a library code, GraphQL code gen. So we will install GraphQL code gen CLI. It takes a while and now we can uh, do this init process. So it will ask us some questions about our setup. So first of all, we want to build a React app. Then we need to provide the schema location, which is the GraphQL endpoint URL. So in our case, it's Versal Sailor Cloud GraphQL. And then where we the place where we are storing our GraphQL queries, mutations and fragments. So in my case, that's GraphQL. And now the plugins. So we'll be using TypeScript, TypeScript operations. We are not using Apollo. So let's exclude that. And we are using URQL. So I will add this one. And there's one more plugin we need to add, but I will do it just after this setup. So finally, generated so we also keep it top level for convenience and introspection we don't need that and the default name for the configuration file is okay and now we need to define the name of a script to run the auto generation i will do generate simply and that should be it this will add a list of plugins to our package json you can see it here. It's, they are not yet installed. We need to install them. So the script is not smart enough to recognize that I was using PNPM. It's just NPM, but we will be using PNPM to install that. And now I can open another window. And here I can write generate. And works. So usually it's a good idea to keep it watching. So it generates and then if something changes, like for example, I remove that, it will automatically uh, get triggered and regenerate. So let's keep it like that in one window. And now we also need another plugin so that we can create named hooks based on the name of our queries. And the plugin is called GraphQL TypeScript URQL. Okay, we have it. Let's open code gen and we need to add it here. TypeScript URQL and restart the uh, auto-generate. 
yeah so we have it now in generated we have this huge file because the graphql sailor graphql api is pretty uh, massive it contains a lot of queries mutations so we have like a file which is pretty long 10,000 lines maybe even more or even 50 and we can now go back to our component and instead of using this generic use query that's provided by Urkel we can have this use fetch product list query so as you can see it automatically detected that we have a query named fetch product list which is here and it appended use the, con the convention for react hooks and the query at the end and now we have this query available so we can get data loading and error from the result and so if loading we can return a div saying loading if error we can return a div saying error and I think this should be message here yeah and if not data return no data otherwise we will generate the results and let's just do that so json stringify data products as you can see is auto completing so let me just show you that again i have products edges and now it's a collection so if i save that it should be working so it's not called loading here it's fetching it's called loading in apollo <laughs> and yeah so we have that we have watching the schema enabled and now we can start the app and see if it works and if we refresh we see that we are getting the results it's not pretty so let's quickly maybe make it a little bit better so I will be iterating so we have the names and we can maybe improve it a little bit by adding let's say the image so normally you should use the image component i will be using emg because it's simpler for now and thumbnail url yeah it works we have the list fetched and that's pretty much it this is how we can quickly connect a Next.js application with a GraphQL API using Oracle. It's fast, it's convenient, and there's also one more thing if you build your app. So if we are going to build our app, we'll see that the first load is uh, 100 more than 100 kilobytes and so if you used apollo this would be bigger and that's the advantage of using oracle because it's only five almost six kilobytes so it doesn't add to this first load uh, payload that you're fetching it's pretty important if you're building larger applications in next.js this doesn't apply to other frameworks that's all i have today thanks for watching see you in the next one